In this video, I'll explain exactly how I improved my app's navigation from this to this. Next.js uses server-side rendering by default for its pages. This means that the HTML for the page is generated on the server at request time, then sent to the browser already populated with content. This is powerful for SEO since the page does not require a client to render. Therefore, search engines have immediate access to the content when indexing and ranking the site. As such, you'll regularly see landing pages, blog posts, and other general content be rendered on the server. Now, how does this relate to client-side navigation? With client-side navigation, you simply switch the content on the page instead of the page refreshing every time you navigate between routes. Next.js provides a link component which handles this quite well, and even prefetches the SSR content when the link is visible on the page. This means that the content is already downloaded before the user clicks, speeding up navigation even more. However, one caveat is that dynamic routes, such as notebook slash ID, where ID is a specific page in the notebook, are not fully prefetched. This is to prevent excessive data and memory usage, since dynamic links are usually shown in a list of dozens on the page. Which brings us to what you see here. We're doing client-side navigation between the notebook pages, but since they're dynamic routes, they're not prefetched. And as such, there is a loading state while the SSR content is getting fetched. Let's take a look at the code, it's pretty straightforward. The page component is simply fetching the note data and passing it through to the children. Not gonna lie, I could have probably named these components better. While the data is being fetched, the loading state is shown instead, which is just this simple spinner. Once we have the data, it makes its way to this React query hook as the initial data allowing us to have access to the data immediately when the page initially loads. Now this is straightforward and the easiest solution to implement. However, I need more control over prefetching data. McMaster Car is an industrial supplies company and their website was recently trending because of a clever trick they use to make navigation feel instant. When you hover over a link, they prefetch the relevant data and when you click the link, they replace the page's content before the route has even changed. As you can see, the content changes before the URL does. Therefore, to replicate this behavior, I swapped out our server-side fetching for client-side fetching using React Query. Our page component now just handles some basic rerouting if the note ID is not a valid number. Otherwise, it displays the same content as before, but only passing in the note ID. The use general note hook has been split up to give us granular access to the query key and the actual fetching logic, but it's the same code as before. With this change, we can now prefetch note data when you hover over a navigation link. The query client provides a prefetch method, but we only want to prefetch the data if it isn't already in the cache, which is why we're using ensure query data instead. All right, let's see if that improved our navigation experience. Hovering over the first note link, you can see that the relevant data was indeed fetched. And as we click through the links, you can see that the loading state has been significantly shortened, but still not completely prevented. Let's take this a step further and throttle our network speed. We can see that although the data was prefetched, the initial loading state is still quite long. Why is that? Well, although we have removed server-side data fetching, the client still needs to make a request to the server to retrieve the loading state component and the actual page content. We took care of the data, but we still asked the server how we should display it. Which brings us to the final step of our optimization. Instead of waiting for the server to return simple content that we'll always need, let's just have it rendered and updated on the client side. Taking a look at this code, our page component doesn't need to do anything anymore, we're just returning null. The layout still does an initial fetch of some minimal data for the sidebar, but that's fine because it's only on the initial page load. In addition to the sidebar, the layout now houses the notebook wrapper and wraps the entire page in the notebook provider. 
The notebook provider is a simple React context, which lets us share the selected note ID across the different components. It also handles redirecting the user if the note ID is not a valid number. The provider considers the route params, so we automatically set the selected note ID based on the URL whenever necessary, such as initial page load. The notebook wrapper simply takes the selected note ID from the context and renders the original notebook page component. If there is no selected note ID, it simply returns null. With these changes, let's test out the navigation once more. Hey, would you look at that instant client-side navigation. The data is fetched as soon as we hover the link, and we instantly re-render the content with the new data when the user clicks the link. Even when I click the links quickly, you can see that it still feels instant. That is so satisfying. Let's try throttling our network speed just to ensure that all users have a good experience. Clicking through the links quickly, you can see that there is a momentary loading state, but that's totally fine for slower networks. In the future, we can improve the loading state and even prefetch the first few items in the list on page load. And there we have it, the full journey. We started with server rendered pages and hit the usual limitation with dynamic routes. From there, we shifted to client-side data fetching with React Query and added intelligent prefetching on Hover. Finally, we reconstructed the layout to fully control rendering on the client. This kind of optimization isn't always necessary, but when you're working with lots of dynamic content or aiming for that extra layer of polish, it can make a huge difference in how your app feels to users. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If this video was helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.